Hi, my name's Jennifer. Welcome back to my channel. This is the end of day's tag. Now, I was tagged by Bob the Booker who created this tag and I was tagged about four months ago. So, first of all, apologies to Bob that it's taken me so long to get round to filming this. I am pretty bad when it comes to doing tags in a timely fashion, so I apologise. Um, I'm going to start off by tagging a couple of people who I don't think have done this tag. Um, I'm going to tag Alice in the Giant Bookshelf because there is a question about a post-apocalyptic stuff which I think Alice quite likes and, and I'm also going to tag Criminally um, because I think he'd have some interesting answers so if you fancy doing it consider yourself tagged. So these um, questions all sort of focus on either end of end of days, end of the year, end of time type prompts. Um, so the first prompt is prophecy, a book that contains a prophecy or a promise, whether it comes to pass or not. So my answer for this is A Murder is Announced by Agatha Christie. This is a Miss Marple novel um, and uh, it's set in the village of Chipping Cleghorn where Miss Marple happens to be visiting and in the local newspaper a, um, an announcement is published which says a murder is announced and will take place on Friday October 29th at Little Paddocks at 6.30pm. Um, so no one quite knows what this is to do with. A lot of people think that it's an invitation to some sort of party where there'll be some sort of murder mystery game or something. Um, so lots of people do gather at Little Paddocks, which is a house, um, at that time. And um, I mean, I don't think it's a spoiler to say that a murder does occur. Um, this, as I say, is a Miss Marple novel, which I have read many years ago, but not as I say, for some time, um, and I would quite like to revisit it at some point in future because I can't actually remember the solution. The next prompt is Apocalypse, a book that talks about the end of the world. So for this one, I'm going to say Leave the World Behind by Ruman Alam. This is a book that I read last year and very much enjoyed. So it's set um, in New York and we follow a family who have gone to... Um, gone on vacation to stay in this house and the house belongs to so it's like an airbnb the house belongs to other people who are who are themselves away so this family goes to stay at this house and then one night there's a knock on the door and it's the couple who say that they own this house themselves and they have um sort of run away from new york city i think the house is like somewhere on the outskirts of new york city um they have escaped from new york city because there's a blackout um things are going on um so they want to seek refuge in their home obviously the family that have got that are staying in the house don't know these people they don't really know who they are um what i really like about this book is it is apocalyptic but it's done in sort of a quiet fashion because um you the characters are in a way one step removed from from whatever might be happening and that's where the terror in the book really comes from the fact that the uncertainty they don't really know what's going on what's happening in new york city they are they can't get in touch with anybody like the phone lines are down everything's down so they don't really know what's going on the the characters themselves don't really know sort of who they can trust or not um so it was a book that i very much enjoyed and would highly recommend the next prompt is Winter, so a book that talks about the end of the year. So for this, I'm going to recommend No Exit by Taylor Adams. So this is a, a sort of a crime thriller novel. It's set in America. I think it's set in Colorado. And our main character is a college student who is um, traveling like across the country. And she is stranded at a highway rest stop in the middle of a blizzard. So I'm pretty sure it takes place in winter time i think i mean i could be wrong um so she's stranded at this rest stop and there are a few other people as well who are also stranded at the rest stop um and what happens and this is on the blurb so i don't think it's a spoiler is um she finds a little girl locked inside one of the parked cars in in the car park at the rest stop and so she doesn't know she doesn't know who the car belongs to so it's about her sort of obviously trying to save the little girl and trying to figure out why the little girl's in there who the car belongs to and so on um i really enjoyed it it's a very fast-paced book i will say it's more of an action type thriller rather than 
um, being a mystery based thriller but there are some like mysterious elements to it um, but great setting in this um, isolated setting which is the kind of thing that I really really enjoy next prompt is nighttime so a book that focuses on the night or has some interesting scenes set in the dark so for this I'm going to rec recommend Thorn Hill by Pam Smy so this is a YA book I'm not entirely sure the age range um, that it is targeted towards, but I mean, I read it last year. I thought it was absolutely brilliant. I thought it was really, really creepy, really quite dark. Um, so we have two narrative strands and two timelines. Um, so we have the present timeline, which is about a little girl called Ella, who has just moved into this big old house with her father. Um, her timeline is told in the form of a graphic novel um, she is quite lonely her father spends a lot of time away working and she spends a lot of time just sort of in her room looking out the window and where they've moved to it's next door to an old like abandoned orphanage and um, Ella sees mainly at night time sort of strange things going on in this abandoned orphanage and in the grounds and then the second timeline we have is set in the 1980s and we follow a little girl called Mary who is one of the um, inhabitants of the orphanage and her um, narrative is told through diary entries so we get her um, her experience of living in the orphanage um, and obviously as the book goes on we get the sort of interconnectedness between the two girls and the two timelines um, I thought Thornhill was absolutely brilliant super creepy and just a really really great book so I would highly highly recommend that one the next prompt is Later Life, so a book that talks about ageing or prominently features older characters. So for this I'm going to go for The Darkness by Ragnar Jonasson. Um, this is an Icelandic novel, it's the first in a trilogy called the Hidden Iceland Trilogy. Um, it features a character called Hulda who is an older um, police detective who's coming up for retirement and she is told that before she retires she can choose one final cold case to attempt to uh, solve before she retires. Um, so she chooses the case of a, uh, a woman, a young woman, who has died in mysterious circumstances some years uh, previous. What I really like about this book and, and about this trilogy as a whole is the main character of Hulda is a really really interesting character so it's not that unusual to have older police detectives is it but um yeah there's something really interesting about what the author is doing in the in this series of books there is quite a significant um side plot um involving Calder's personal life that runs through the three books so for that reason i would recommend you read them in order um it would actually probably fill a number of these prompts because obviously it's about an, an older character who's coming up for retirement i'm pretty sure it's set in the winter time towards the end of the year it is very dark in its um, setting and also in many of its themes as well um, and this series is one of my personal favorite crime series um, the next prompt is until the end of my days a book that you think will stick with you for life and or that you can imagine rereading later and still getting a lot from so for this, I'm going to go with The Picture of Dorian Gray by Oscar Wilde. So this is a book that I first read maybe three years ago, um, and I absolutely loved it. Like, I'd probably say it's one of my favourite books, but I have only read it once. I am hoping to reread it again, um, hopefully later this year at some point. Um, I think this is such a great book. It's quite plotty, and I do like a good juicy plot. So I very much enjoyed that, but I also think the writing in this book is absolutely exquisite. It's some of the best writing I think I've ever read. Um, and I can see myself revisiting this book again and again and getting more from it each time I reread it. And I think it's probably um, a new favourite book for me. The final prompt is at the end of the day, a cliche or trope that annoys you. So there are probably a number of cliches and tropes that annoy me. One that does annoy me, and it's one that you see quite a lot in sort of 
crime fiction, psychological thrillers. You see it less so nowadays, but I have read at least one book in the last 12 months which features this trope. And it's the trope of the childless woman who is clearly crazy and wants to steal your baby. Now, it's boring, it's old, it's been overdone, it's kind of offensive. Um, and I could really do without reading that trope anymore. Um, I can assure you, I, as a childless woman, do not want to steal your baby. I might want to steal your cat, but not your baby. So that is a trope that does particularly uh, wind me up quite a lot. Um, so those are all the questions. Thank you, Bob, for creating a really interesting tag. And I do apologise again for taking so long to get to it. Um, if I haven't tagged you, but you would like to have a go at this tag, please consider yourself tagged. Let me know if you're going to do it so I know to check out your video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you're all doing well and I'll speak to you again very soon. Bye.